He does. Because for the reason that sense be means to exist, cause a thing that gives, I should have put gives there, gives rise or reason for an action. Cause. We exist for a cause. Don't think God put breath in your lungs and gave you an able body and then saved your soul and gave you eternal life for no reason. We exist for a cause. We exist to rise to an action. That's a cause. Because for the reason that since, and you could add a bunch of things after that, how about this? Since Jesus died for you, since Jesus gave you eternal life, since Jesus gave you light, since Jesus gave you his word, since Jesus gave you because, we exist. Jesus existed for a cause. He even said at the age of 12, did he not say that he was about his father's business? So I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about the cause. The cause. Bible believers, from being in company with Bible believers for many years, Bible believers know what the cause is. They know what it is. If I were to ask you tonight, what's the cause? What is the cause? And you could give me a long list of things. What's the cause? You could boil it down to the cause of Christ. Right? The cause of Christ. Mouth dry. Because Christ left us with a cause, we are called, we exist for the reason, for an action. How about this, to preach the gospel? It's simple. Very simple. Sowing the seed of the Word of God in the field. The advancement and the growth of God's spiritual kingdom. So that the angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner repents and comes to Christ and is saved and born again and put into the body of Christ. Warring a good warfare for the cause of Jesus Christ. Pulling down strongholds. Contending for the faith. Sounds like work. Sounds like work. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's why we exist. Causes take work. As soon as you quit putting feet to your cause, your cause is no longer a cause. But Jesus saved you because you exist. You exist. Do you exist? Everyone here is existing, right? Anyone here not existing? You exist for a thing that gives rise or reason for an action. And Bible believers are good about telling you what the cause is. But the truth of the matter is very few are being about the cause. They know what it is. Few exist. What does that mean to exist? To be. 
Few exist for the cause. Tomorrow when you wake up, you will be existing. Unless you die tonight, and you'll longer, no longer exist. But tomorrow when you wake up, you are existing to be. Jesus didn't save you for no reason. He saved you because. Because he loved this world. Because he loved sinners. And because he was about his father's business. Because he came to this earth with a, a purpose and a cause. Paul the Apostle had a cause. He had a purpose. And he went into the very end and he, he died fighting for the cause. Did Paul live and exist for the cause of Christ? Did he or did he not? Yes. He died contending for the faith. He died imprisoned for his faith. He died suffering for his faith. He existed for the cause. So why is it? Why is it? And I'm, I'm talking to Bible believers. I'm, not ta I'm talking to Bible believing Christians. Why is it that there's few that are being about the cause. And again, you could give a long list. They've lost sight of the cause. Maybe they just lost sight. They can tell you what it is, but they've, it's, they've become so distant from it. The fear of man. That's a big one, isn't it? Fear of being labeled. Let me say this. If you live and you exist for the cause, let me let you in on something. You're going to be labeled. Whatever label the world puts on you. You know, Jesus, the Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, the Holy One, the King of Israel, the righteous and holy Son of God was labeled. What'd they call Jesus? Beelzebub. They called him a devil. Do we think ourselves above being labeled by the world because of fear of man? And I understand how political correctness, if you, if you exist, I'm talking about existing, you exist for the cause, you are going to be labeled. Let me give you a few. Intolerant. Maybe racist. I don't know nowadays. I mean, if you do anything, you're racist. Holier than thou, Bible thumper, you know, just go right down the line. You're going to be labeled. Maybe the reason that few, even Bible believers, exist for the cause, their fear of being isolated. Friends, family, people at work. I don't know. Maybe it's the fear of not knowing. Walking by faith. You know, when Carl prayed, he prayed. And like I said, it's a blessing when the prayers line up with the preaching. You know, you really never know when you take a track out of your pocket and put it in someone's hand. You don't know how they're going to react. That's walking. Listen, that is walking by faith. You never know when you knock on that door, do you? You never know when you step out on that street corner if some Muslim's going to run you down. You don't know. You know, I kind of keep, keep an eye out for that nowadays. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to look over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Walking by faith. When's the last time you did something for Jesus Christ and what you did, you had no idea how it was going to turn out? There's fear in that. There's fear in that. 
Maybe the reason that few exist for the cause, they lack leadership. There's no one there to lead them. I mean, why should you hand out tracts if the pastor and the leadership and the church doesn't do it? Maybe that's why. There's a long list of reasons why few exist for the cause. But I suppose if you were to ask most Bible believers what the cause is, they'd give you, they'd, more than likely they'd come up with the right answer. Or partially. They know what the cause is, don't they? The cause is for Christ. The cause is for the gospel. The cause is to take the Word of God and the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and take the seed of the Word of God and sow it into the field. You hear me preach it all the time. So they know what the cause is, what seems to be the problem. Maybe they've lost, maybe this is it. Maybe they've lost sight of why. They know what it is, but they've lost sight of why the cause. Why? Now, when you talk about a cause, if you're familiar with the Bible, there's one story that uses that word cause. It should draw your attention to. Anybody know? Well, let's turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. We'll read a few verses. Starting in verse 21. Now, when we begin to read the kid, kids, you will recognize this story more than likely. Verse 21, we all there? 1 Samuel 17, verse 21. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. <coughs> Isn't that what we're about? Is the church of Jesus Christ likened to an army? Endure hardness as a good so soldiers are in armies. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, is there another army out there in opposition to us? You sure about that? You sure about that? See, you know what the cause is, but why? What is it that what is it that compels the Bible believer to take that step? Look at the next verse. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath, by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake, according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up surely to defy Israel? Is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? 
And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? There has been tens of thousands of sermons preached on that text. Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason we exist? So what's the cause? We know what the cause is. Picture this is the church, the body of Christ on this earth against the opposition, against the other armies, against the enemies. We're an army made up of soldiers, correct? They have their armies, they have uh, their soldiers, and their soldiers are in defiance against the armies of God. Is that still true to this day? So what's the cause? The cause is to fight, plain and simple. Fight for the cause of truth and right. It's the fight. Get in the fight. Endure hardness. Fight the good fight of faith. It's all Bible. Wrestle against uh, spiritual principalities and powers and darkness. Take the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and go out and face the enemies of God. Are there any enemies of God out there? There are. There are. You know what? There always has been. And there always will be. But like I've said a million times, but the unfortunate thing is the Christians that are willing to take that step from they know what it is to recognizing why. Do you know why the cause? It's simple. Because the world and this world system is in defiance openly defying the Word of God. They're not ashamed. They're not ashamed. Are they ashamed to speak against the Word of God? No, they look for opportunity. Every chance that they get to defy the truth of the Word of God. You want to prove it? Take it out there and watch what happens. It's almost as if the Bible believer knows what the cause is, but they've lost sight of why. Why? Why the cause? And they become comfortable with this world defying openly defined. When I think about this, I think about Sioux Falls and they're just putting up billboards, atheists. Those billboards, they serve one purpose, to defy the Word of God. That's the purpose, to defy God's Word, to defy the truth. So I say to the churches in Sioux Falls, is there not a cause? Absolutely there's a cause. And they know what the cause is. But it's almost as if they've lost sight of why. David saw a reason for the cause. Before, they, before the armies of Israel ever faced this Philistine, Goliath, God had already given them the cause. They knew what the cause was. The cause was to take the armies of Israel and to fight against the enemies of Israel and establish a kingdom on this earth for God. They already knew what the cause was. But here comes this Philistine openly defying Israel 
And wouldn't you know it, the only one that saw why, why the cause, was this little shepherd boy. The multitudes. The multitudes retreated. You know, the multitudes retreated to their posh churches and their comfortable You have to know and believe that there used to be more laborers. There used to be more soldiers. There used to be. You know what? I don't want Lighthouse Baptist to be a used to be. And you know, I was thinking about this when I was studying this and meditating on this thought. And again, I I thought about this and thought maybe that's why God hasn't given us a nice big building and You never know what will happen when you start moving into something nicer and bigger. And I don't know. You know what? I, this is the way I look at this church. So where's all the people? Where's all the soldiers? Where are they? I look at this church as it's like a barracks. I was in the Navy and went to boot camp and stayed in a barracks. You know what the barracks consist of? The bare necessities. That's, well, here you go. This is the bare necessities to have a church. We don't have much. But you know what we have? We have a cause. But our cause should be the same cause for all the churches in Sioux City. Isn't it the same cause? You have the armies of Israel, same cause. They all have the same cause, right? They know what it is. We've got to beat them, but we got this giant. And this giant was allowed to openly defy their God. And rather than facing the giant, they all retreated. God will use somebody else. You know who God used? He used the least. Now you think about Lighthouse Baptist Church. He used the least. He used the least of his brethren. His other brothers were out there ready to fight, right? Then David stands up. It's like, what's going on here? One little lad, the least. And he's the only one that saw a cause. He's the only one that saw reason. Because. He's the only one that saw reason for why the armies of Israel existed. Because. And he's the only one that... Action. There's been times when I... I've thought, Lord, what do, why are we here? We've got this little barracks. We's, we've got a few soldiers. Someone has to be about the cause in Sioux City. I am concerned and burdened with Sioux Falls. I mean, why don't we have the atheists billboards going up in Sioux City. Do you think possibly we could have something to do with that? I know this by way of Brother Dow's testimony. He's been living up there for 15 years. They, the, the, the enemies just have free course in that city without any opposition. What's the cause? It's to oppose those that openly defy the truth of God's Word. Can I ask you a question? Is that going on today? 
24-7. That's why they exist. To oppose the truth of God's Word. That's the reason for the cause. Open defiance to the Word of God. And you know me, I'm not, a, I'm not about going out there and being obnoxious and just trying to really just, just make a bunch of people hate us, but I'm all about taking the Word of God out there. Little's much when God's in it, people. He got a little lad, the least of his brethren, and the most unlikely. I mean, he, he went, if you read that story, he went to put Saul's armor on and stuff. He's like, this stuff doesn't even fit. Take it off. I don't need this. Read the rest of that story. He's like, I, I've got God. And I have him behind me. And if I'm the only one that sees reason for this cause, then so be it. I see reason for a cause in Sioux City. I see reason for a cause in every city. Why? Because this world, this generation, like no other generation that has ever existed, is openly defying the Word of God. Now here's what we, we're up against. You ready? We're not up against one giant. <laughs> A bunch of Goliaths now. It's not just one. See, the church should have rose up way back then when it was just one giant. Now we got a bunch. So should we get discouraged and say, you know what? You know, like, I mean, there's churches now that say, you know what? If you can't beat them, <laughs> we'll just bring everything that the world loves into the church rather than opposing the world and not being a friend of the world, like the Bible says, friendship of the world is enmity against God. How can you make a friend out of an enemy? You win them for Jesus. But you see, if you try to win them for Jesus, they're going to label you. But so be it. Take your little sling like John 3.16, right? Just a little sling, a little stone. And just cast it out there. I mean, what if David doesn't go? You see, when David saw Goliath, he's like, what in the world's going? This is why we exist. This is the reason for the existence of Israel is to establish a kingdom on earth for our God and any enemy that stands in our way. God said he would go before us and fight our battles for us. Let's go. But it's almost as if even Bible believers, they've lost sight. They know what the cause is. Oh, yeah, preach the gospel, hand out tracts. They know what it is. But then the world openly defies what they believe to be the cause. They openly defy their God. And I'll tell you what, most Christians, they'll complain about it. They'll just talk about it. They'll tell someone, did you hear what? They didn't do anything about it. When the world openly defies the truth of God's words, there is a cause. Because, right? We exist for the cause. I thank God for these, this little barracks here. I do. This is something special. It really is. I know we come together Wednesday and it's just this little group. I wish we had more folks. I wish more would... But, you know, it's hard to get folks to stick around in the barracks with the bare necessities. Difficult to find a soldier nowadays that wants to put his neck on the line for Jesus. 
I'm sure glad Jesus put his neck on the line for me. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Fighting down to his last breath. Fight, 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 fight. There's been times here that it's gotten rough. It's like I'm getting tired of fighting. But then I turn on the news and I see another story just openly defying the truth of God's Word. And I, I just can't stop. I can't quit. We can't quit. We've got a cause. And we exist for that cause. Yep, Little Lighthouse Baptist Church. You know how much Jeff doubt he would love a church like this up there. He's praying for it. He's praying for someone to start a church that would take the Word of God out into that city openly against the forces that are openly defying the Word of God. You know how many kids up there are being indoctrinated and the devil sowing his seeds? 24-7. And the churches have retreated to their plush churches, their comfort zone. The battle's never comfortable. It never is. If you ever want to watch a war documentary, watch anything about World War I. <sighs> Trench warfare. That's where we got the trench foot from. Like your feet are wet for eh, two, three months, never dry. And they just like to, your skin just peeling off. Where are those soldiers for Jesus Christ? Don't we have a greater cause? The armies of the enemy are right out there. And they have free course unless, unless, unless little old David, the least of his brethren, little old lighthouse, the least of the churches in Sioux City, right? does something about it. He was the least. He was the last that anyone would ever. I mean, he would be the last person someone would call. He just came from the field. He was the least of his brother, and he was the last, and he's just a little lad, small in stature. In comparison, how, how tall they say Goliath was? Something like 11 foot tall or 9 foot tall? There were giants in those days. He was the least, the last, and just a little lad, but I'll tell you what. He was big in faith. He was big in courage, wasn't he? He was big in confidence, but his confidence wasn't in him. It was in his God. How is it that Little old David is the only one that saw reason. Why the cause? He's the only one that saw why. Why the cause? Because openly opposing God's truth. David couldn't stand for it. He didn't. We've got Goliaths in Sioux City, and because of that, there's a reason for the cause. Amen? We know what the cause is. Let's not lose focus of why the cause. The next time you hear someone, something, some 
someone openly opposing, that ought to stir you up inside. You know what I mean? It ought to do something in you. When the world opposes God's truth, it ought to stir you up. But it's unfortunate. Most Christians just kind of, they've just given up. Just given up. And just let the world do what the world's going to do. Well, sorry. Not me. Not Lighthouse Baptist Church. We're not just going to let the world do what the world's going to do. We're just going to cast our little stones out there. Sling them out there. And hope we hit a giant. We need to pray for Sioux Falls. God can do it. I need to talk to Jeff Down and see if somehow, some way, he can find a little building or somewhere to meet and and God will lead me to get a hold of some PBI graduate or another Bible believer that wants to that wants to work. Most preachers they want to take over a pre existing flourishing business, you know. They don't want to take over a work. That's what it'll be up there. It'll be a battle. It'll be a battle to stay in the fight. It'll be a battle just nonstop. There's not going to be too many nowadays that'll, that'll sign up for that. But God's got someone out there. He always does. So keep that in your prayers. I know, Brother Dow, he just, I, I was supposed to have you guys pray. Keep, he's been witnessing to some folks up there. Jehovah's Witness, some other folks. He gave, gave the names. He's up there witnessing, passing out tracks. Amen? So let's keep that in our prayers. All right. Fain closes in prayer, please.